I don't know if uh, you've been, uh, you watch as much of the news on uh, the iPhone as what I watch. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. Um, it, it's shocking though what seems to be happening in so many different areas of our society, like sporting events. Um, there were three videos uh, that showed people punching each other out on the 18th green of a golf <laughs> because one group had been playing too slow. Now, maybe these things always happen, and the fact is that because everybody has a cell phone and everybody has a video camera on the cell phone, we see more of this. But it's shocking, right? It's a gentleman's game. It's a game where you're supposed to be kind and nice to each other and polite, and you're not, I don't see anywhere in the rule book that you should be having fisticles on the 18th. And you see stories of uh, uh, videos of the eight-year-old kids and one of the parents gets irate and comes onto the court, the basketball court, and starts punching the referee in the face. It's shocking. It's shocking. And on and on, the videos show our inhumanity to our fellow man. It's shocking and it's heartbreaking. There's a lot of things that, that are troubling. Um, the COVID thing for three years, it was very troubling. Uh, global warming is something that I'm quite concerned about and, uh, and uh, worry about to, to some extent. Um, my brother woke up to, uh, to smoke in the air in Wisconsin yesterday. And I said, don't blame us. It's in uh, the upper peninsula of Michigan. And there's fires there. And there's fires across Canada. It's a sign of global warming. But I think the things that disturb me more than any of this is the way we are treating one another, the way we are responding to one another, how we exclude people from our midst, and we get angry so quickly, and we put up a fence and a wall around us. And the reason is that we are afraid. I'm uh, one of the friendliest, most outgoing uh, persons that I know. And when I'm out in public in a grocery store or whatever, I can't help but start up a conversation. But something's been troubling the last couple of months. I'll go up and start talking to people. And people step back, they turn, and they walk away. And the reason is they are afraid. There's so many stories that we hear about. Right? We don't trust one another. Trust was one of the biggest uh, parts of our lives years ago. We had to trust one another. When we grew up in an agricultural society, you needed your neighbors and your neighbors needed you. You came to church because you knew the people that you were in church with, that you were worshiping with. You needed to count on them. They needed to be there for you in your time of need, and you needed to be there in their time. And we've lost so much of that. In chapters the other day, I guess it's called Indigo now, but you get the point. I came across uh, the recent uh, Brene Brown book, uh, Matters of the Heart or something like that, and here's a quote that she has. In these challenging moments of dissonance, we need to stay curious and resist choosing comfort over courage. It's brave to invite new information to the table, to sit with it, and to hear it out. And it's also rare these days. In a time of dissonance, in a time of trouble, it's easy to choose the way of comfort, right? the way of comfort and not to be challenged. We don't want any more challenge. Have you been watching in the news what's happening particularly in the States with the, uh, the whole uh, the gay uh, information? And when a company like Bud Light or uh, what's the other one that's uh, Target, they come out with some advertising uh, including the pride flag and suddenly tens of millions of people are boycotting these companies. 
We don't want this. We don't feel comfortable with this. So keep it out of our face. There is more and more negative pushback and negative rhetoric about uh, gay, lesbian, transgender people. And I know for older people, it's challenging and it's troubling. But this is a time for us to have courage and not comfort. God gives us the ability to be courageous. And this is a time to be courageous and to open our minds and to try to understand what's happening in our world. How can we live in this world? How can we make this world a better place? Being an American and a Canadian, I'm, I'm very troubled as to what I see happening south of the border. The book banning in, in, in some district now, they, they banned the poem that some young girl read at Joe Biden's inauguration. I, I can't fathom it. They want to ban books that talk about slavery, the history of slavery in the United States. We, it makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about those things. It's a time for us to be courageous, to step into the difficult discussions, and to try to open our minds and try to understand. If you've never talked to a transgender person, you may never really understand what it is that they are going through. But they don't need more doors slammed in their face. They don't need more negativity, judgment, shaming upon them. They need a society that understands and is open to the situation that we find ourselves in. These are troubling times. The United States also, they've closed their borders pretty much. Uh, they don't want the immigrants to come into their country. To me, this has been one of the greatest things that have, has happened to Saskatchewan. Opening our borders, welcoming people. You think we have enough space here in Saskatchewan? Take a drive someday. Open our borders, welcome these people in, and tell them they are welcome here. Amen. Oh. Amen.